Praise God. Praise God op die spot. Vanochtend. Right here. At CRC the place to be. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome everyone watching on YouTube. I don't know what you hear. But we had an amazing time this morning. Come on. What amazing time. I, our service coordinator goes like, you have to go. You listen to say, you have to go. I said, no, I'm singing. I just like this. So, uh, well done to our band and our sound. Wow. That's like whoosh, taking off like on a whole nother level. It felt like I was a, almost like in a different church this morning. It was like, what? Is this CRC? Oh, yeah, it is. This is what we do. And here's the beautiful part of, of, of this house that I've learned over time in my years here. I saw this morning uh, eight years ago. And then I saw eight years ago, we were still standing on the small little stage on, in, in Timbali. Um, and there's the three worship leaders. There they stand. But we did the best with what we had. With these small two speakers. Um, oh, they were, we replaced them actually, finally. So um, it was these two, two small, no, it was these ones. These two ones, these tight ones, they were our main speakers. It was like, um, we, were, we, we almost said rock the place. You cannot say that. Rock is not good. Um, bad connection. But in any case, and then um, went through all the phases. But what I'm going to say is about this church. This church never gives up. They always fight. They always fight. They always fight. Um, this family is just amazing family. And um, so if you, if you are prone to giving up, you're prone to lose it. You are prone to... Um, struggle uh, you can switch off the heaters really um it, it, we are hot enough in the, this place is that a bad word in any case um you're all hot we're all hot we're just hot for jesus on fire for jesus i had to do some religious thing there um be real um but in this house people so if you're down and out I believe that god will touch you this morning he will work in you if you are here to get inspired i believe you will be um, if you are here because uh, you have struggles in life, I'm glad you're here. Um, uh, if you are here because you see what you can take, go away. Um, uh, maybe, no, no, sorry. Take Jesus with you. That will be nice. Um, if, you, if you are worried about your future and things in your life, um, if you, if you, there's many scholars here, uh, students here as well. If you are worried about your life put it in the hands of jesus but we will show you how it's not uh jesus here's my life and then you just run the same direction it's jesus here's my life show me now the way amen because if you found yourself your real self in life uh whew, you are so powerful you don't even know because god have said to the guys that did not know who they are he says to gideon he says uh, 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 wake up man of valor he says i speak to you man of valor imagine when you feel down and out and jesus comes he says hey come here king come here president and you're like i'm not he says, come here i made you a doctor i made you i made you whatever it is amen and may you discover that in this house this morning may god speak into your heart and uh, if you if you're single may he give you a wife yeah in the church so if, if she's not here yet uh, possibly here tonight possibly here tonight possibly i just feel it in my bones uh, or the guy, you know, you'll never know. Uh, we, many couples here that got married in church. Uh, many, 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 many. Um, and then uh, they've got great marriages, uh, great children, great lives, great careers, businesses. And it's not why we come to church. May I be clear on that. You come to church because you worship Jesus. And if that is wha what you can get today, just to say, Jesus, here I am. And maybe you are here just because you want to uh, what is it? Uh, 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 just to bring comfort to your soul. Uh, yeah, uh, that thing. And then um, you, you, uh, because you've been a long time ago in church and you just want to feel better. Well, feel better. Because you're here. You made it. So, on that note, I want to welcome every one of you here and believe that we're going to have a great time. Thank you. All the new visitors, we welcome you here. It's your first time. I'm glad you are here. Because your life will never, ever be the same again after this service. Amen. You may be seated. It's almost like this one guy tell me, he says, no, he invites his friend uh, to church. Uh, not this church. It doesn't matter which church. It can be any church for, this, for the matter of the story. And then the person said to him, he said, hey, listen, 
If I go to that church and anyone starts speaking in a strange uh, 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 language that I don't understand, I'm out. So, yeah, no. Now, now, they went to this church and for years it never happened in that church where anyone spoke in, in tongues and all these things. And then he said to the person, he says, now, if anyone flies around, like fall down, get pushed, get fight, uh, then, then I'm, I'm out. Then I'm out. And then if anyone in that church talks about money, I'm out. And if anyone in that church starts shouting and shout Jesus loud and, and say to me, I have to raise my hands, I'm out of there. This guy says, no, yeah. in our church, if, uh, I, I'm going there for a long time now. It never happens there. So you can come. That morning, the first thing when they start, the pastor jumped on the stage and said, in Jesus' name, lift your hands. Strike one. And this guy goes like, it's a real story. I tell you as real, it's a real story. It's not a joke. I'm not busy telling a joke. It's a real story. Um, and then it's uh, as real as it happened in Elspring, um, in Bombella. And then, uh, <laughs> and then they worship, worship, and then the worship leader starts singing in tongues. And this guy like strike two. You lied to me. And then goes on, go on, and the pastor jumps off and starts prophesying to the person, saying, "You need love. You need love." And the pastor hugged this guy and goes like, "Now you're weird." And as she, the pastor did that, the one person uh, in front of this guy falls. Bah! They fall down. And he's like, we had strike five already, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Well, th there's no moral to the story. The person is still not in church because he gave God a list of how the church should be. And God goes like, hey, let me show you quickly. So thank God for obedient pastors there in that stage. Because if the pastor never in there because it's not a show this is not a show this is life and i don't talk about talking in tongues or uh, in in uh, any one of those things um i can't judge those things i can't say nothing about it if it is of god i just have to be quiet i have to be quiet if it's if a church do something crazy i cannot i i'm not that church i'm not there i cannot say anything to them how many times did you go on holiday and you see someone do something stupid on their way to holiday they put some ugly things on their roof looks like a tortoise or something and then and then you go like why would you do that well we don't know maybe he had to take his mother-in-law with and where must she sit i don't know i don't know it's like you have to think about what what is people what is people i've got a great mother-in-law we don't have issues at all um or she with me um at least and and um so when you come to church don't come with a list but come with an expectation of what god's going to do in your life and that will change your whole life and then you will get to the place where you get stretched because you're not stretching it's a wrong gym in that gym if they don't get you to build muscle faith muscle like even if i don't see it i believe it faith Faith then builds up. We all need fight, faith. God gets pleased by our faith. It's the faith that we have in Jesus that we, may, that we believe. It's faith in Jesus. And that faith creates something. Many people love Jesus. And then I will go to the word. Which will be very quick. So many people love Jesus like I love a Lamborghini but do I have a Lamborghini no and many people want Jesus like I want a Lamborghini which I actually don't want anymore I've grown older but I just have to say for the sake of someone that oh Ferrari whatever you want yeah he's La Feld Cruiser and by the way if you have a cruiser it's fine put the name Bosfark on it and then you're fine but why if you have a Nissan Fierden or Bucky set you Bosfark on it just be real or you have a Hilux now is the Hilux is a Bosfark yeah as a cruiser is a Bosfark you can you say Hilux you can't do that it's stealing don't steal what other people have invented I'm just playing around I'm just playing around 
Um, you are here for your faith, to build your faith. That's why you are here. Do you know that? Do you know God designed the church for a pur specific purpose? God designed the church, not humans. We have, to, we have to get to the point of understanding that God created the church, instituted the church, built the church, God. Now if God built something that should be something precious, amazing. He, uh, God built you. He, he, he put you together. He knows your name before you were even formed in your mother's womb. Like the one pastor said, before your mother knew you, God knew you. <laughs> uh, God knew you before even your mother knew you. Yeah, it's fact. It's true. It sounds weird, but it's, it's a fact. And I think sometimes God has this amazing sense of humor because when we put him in a box, he just do the exact opposite thing. But he's God. And our respect for him and these things and his people is critical. Now, I'm going to talk about possibly possibly closing with uh, this session. We are build part of, uh, talking about building up. Building up. And I'm talking about something that is very close to my heart because if it was not for the church, I would have never found purpose in my life. I'm not talking about of being pastor or my position as a pastor. That's just my office. I'm just in, I'm not past any on my grave will say, any van der Merwe, 1977 till uh, 2099, um, something like that, or 21. I want to go to 21. That will be nice, get into 21, but yeah, then I will be like, oh, it's um, or something like that. So, so, but some of you sitting here, possibly we'll see 20 the 20 one but most of us will not will not see that we will not see the digit change uh, many of us have seen the digit change from 19 to 20 that was cool yeah now we are uh, 2000 ah, there we go all computers going to crash ah, your calculator will attack you the next morning everyone switch everything off on 20,000 Oh, one, oh, one, oh, 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 oh. I thought that, that some demon is going to possess your, no, not even demons, calculators. You'd be very, very, very glad Elon was not where he is now because that would have been, you don't know what he would have done. Change your house name, change your name. You would have been maybe a different person. I don't know. But the fact is, uh, uh, we've, been, uh, we've been a few people, and some of you just been born in the 2000s. Sorry, you missed it. Hey. <laughs> You've been born in 2001. Uh, you have to fight hard to get to 2021 to have the same experience we have, you know. <laughs> we have some. It's like, <laughs> been there, man. We did it. But then some of you are close to get to the 21. But then the question is, when that thing takes over, you're going to be very old, all of you. And then um, you're going to think back. You're going to say, what? Can you believe it? I'm here. I don't know. Maybe you'll be flying then. Don't know. I don't know. We're still not flying yet. Um, I'm doing like physical fun. <laughs> there you go. But I want to say this to you. But when you get there, do you know what you're going to find there that's going to be the exact same? The Bible and the church. They're still going to be there. Coke, will they make it today? I'm not sure. KFC? Possibly. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> but will they make 22 to 2? 2 to 2 when it goes there? We don't know. You don't know. There's maybe someone new in by, in, inventing something better. I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know is that the word will stand. The Bible will stand. No word will be taken out of the Bible. No gentle, toddle, anything will be taken out of the Bible. It will still be there. And the church will still be on the same mission. If we get there. <laughs> don't be. 
because on our way there, so yes, by possibly that time, I will have a grave. And many of us will have a grave. Who's then running what? Who's doing what then? And we, now here, have a responsibility towards that. And that's just earth numbers. What about heaven? What about heaven? What will be in heaven then? Now, I want to... I want to, that's why church is so important to me because it gave me stability it gave me direction it gives me purpose um, it keeps me together it keeps me in unity and like this morning some uh, 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 praise and worship and sound it gives harmony perfect now let's read Matthew 16 13 to 19 when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, now, now just by, can I just a small side note? I've never seen Jesus sitting and uh, do nothing. It was either when he was doing nothing, he was praying, and when he was resting, he was praying. But he was always on the move. He was like very busy. And he said even that to the disciples. He says, I've, I've been up to the business of my father. Now you go do the business when he left. Now you be busy with the, the business of my father. So we as Christians have to, be be, have to be busy with the business of the father, the kingdom business. All of us should be busy with that. It's not the pastor's job. I'm just there to keep the institution there so that you can do that. And then my biggest job is to teach you how to do that, the Bible says. So Ephesians 4, if you ever wanted. So the Bible says, then, uh, so they said, they, they said, si some say John the Baptist. Oh, no, let me rewind. Get back. Verse 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah. Remember, they wait for the coming of them as well. Uh, 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 there is a prophecy that they will return or reincarnate or whatever the case may be. I don't know. I, I, I've not studied that part that well. But he said to them, um, uh, uh, some say Baptist, uh, John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. See, he said to them, but who do you say I am? You, uh, uh, it's good what other people say and Google say and, and all these things, but who do you say I am? Or maybe... Every one of us should just start there this morning. Who do we say is Jesus to us? Most important question. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. There he sets the foundation. He puts the foundation down right there. He said, he said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. In other words, you are who you are. You are God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They're God. He says to him, You are God actually. In, in, if, if I have to just to translate, retranslate, translate, translate, translate. He still keep on saying, you are God. And no one told Simon Peter that. Spirit spoke. Inside, it come from here. Simon, still Simon Reed, he's undecisive. So the devil can still yo-yo him. While he's busy building his relationship with Jesus. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you. Obviously, if you don't, if you know that, and it comes from the well on the inside, deep calling unto deep, then wow, you're blessed, man. Someone else have spoken to you besides me. Who's that someone? He said, he said, um, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my Father who is in heaven. What? You mean God the Father have bypassed Jesus a little bit to talk to Simon? Yeah, obviously for this. And I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church. And the church then. Why the church? Why the importance that this is... This is, you are the son of God, of the living God. Why? And the gates of hate, of hell, shall not prevail against it. Death cannot cancel this. Your grave cannot cancel this. Nothing can cancel the church. He says, there, he established. You, Simon, Peter, 
the fact that you know I am Jesus, the son of the living God, I will, can now build my church. My church is based on that, that Jesus is the son of God. Now let's build. Let's build this up from there. Let's start there with this whole church thing. So many people are so, so distracted with their own lives that they forget to build the kingdom of God. They forget it's all about that. There's something more important than building the kingdom of God. There's something, and yes, that's life. That's what life does to us. That is why life is designed like that. Not by God. Because when Satan got kicked out of, of, of hell, uh, of heaven into hell, which is still to come, he's not in hell now. Where's Satan? Roaming on the earth like a roaring lion. Look who to devour. And let me just help some of you because I got some people scared uh, a few sermons ago. When I said, I, I start praying, I said, uh, Jesus, the bright and morning star. He is the bright and morning star, not Lucifer. Go read the Bible. Go read the Revelation. He's, it's not Satan. He's not morning star. I know there's a movie like he's the bright morning star. He's morning star, Lucifer. He's not. Jesus is the morning star. Okay, that's theology. It's not even theology. It's Bible. It's literally, it's the, it's the words. So, it's, and that's not the, the point today. So, so, I will build my church. I will do that. Satan gets kicked out of hell. Of heaven. Because he knows better. He, he, he uh, I know what you're saying, but I know, I've heard so it's so important to have the Bible that you understand and know the Bible. The old one, old Danny, you know, he said to me, "You have to buy Bible as it's like No, it will not. It gives me a sound mind. It gives me foundation. But that was funny when she said, "No, you make you crazy if you read too much Bible." And I don't say that. I don't endorse that at all. And he says, "He says I will build my house on this rock. I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth, it will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth, it will be loosened in heaven." So Satan then tried then to to bind uh, things to get to us. He tries to get people then um, to fight one another, to break unity. If I can get four out of your uh, uh, your car, have four pistons or six, it doesn't matter let's say four and i can get one person out it must fire if i can get two out you have a problem three out you won't go anywhere <laughs> by the end of the day you will not have no false thief left so everything is there for a purpose so satan comes into your marriage satan comes into your life your business the church wherever it is and try to break it apart Try to bring this unity into it. By many ways and means. And he's so subtle. He plans so well. I'm not talking about Satan this morning. So I just say that's what he does. Jesus say, just the fact that you know I am the son of God, Simon Peter. That's going to go against Satan. And his plans. And then he cannot prevail. So if Jesus said to Simon Peter, the following words son of god what will satan attack just that statement bold what will satan attack building action my church what will satan attack if you know that there's a burglar coming to your house tonight what will you do to go against the burglar, you have to put in measures in place to stop the burglar. You get an angry dog, heavy electricity, and a lot of steel. And maybe a gun of stuff. I don't know if you're licensed. You have to have license. You have to be by law. I'm just saying, you will do everything to stop the burglar. Now, if you are running a company and you know there's someone out there fighting your company directly what will you do fight you will do everything to fight you will uh, if someone attacks your family what will you do fight against that jesus says i will build my church 
because I'm doing that against Satan and his plans. What do you think Satan is going to do? Fight. There, Jesus said it, now he's going to fight. So what does he fight? Church, unity, building, stop the church from being built. I said it many times over and over. Our municipality here have not made provision for us to build another church yet. You can't go apply for land, actually. We do, we have, it's in there. But they have no provision in our town planning for a church. No, nothing. What does Satan do? Stops us at government level. Stop the church from growing at government level. It's not just us. There's a lot of other churches around here that need a home, a establishment. Schools. You can't get schools. There's no planning in our city for a school. Our schools are full. Why? If you can stop education and you stop good moral teachings in schools where it happens, you stop. You stop that generation. Look at his plan. There should be more churches, more schools, more land for us and stop building all these malls and entertainment places and giving us what we need as a, as a, as, as a country. Education, critical health services. You see? Because you know, if you can get the people sick, dumb, deaf, no talk. I don't say people are dumb. I'm saying, you hear what I'm saying? No information. Then he can tell you anything. Look at his plan. Just put the plan out there. I'm just saying this. Now Jesus says, I will build my church. That cannot stand. What then should our side of the fight be against the church or with the church not in the church with the church the importance of the church something very close to my heart and your heart our heart we prayed last half night it wasn't half night but we prayed we prayed a lot on uh, last week, fasting prayer. Uh, 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 and, and look what the prayer, look what the prayer I've already done in the church. You can feel it. Prayer, change everything. Amen. Okay, so the point I want to make, yeah, from the scripture this morning is knowing Jesus intimately leads ultimately to build the church aggressively because Satan fights aggressive against the church he don't play games so we cannot play games so building the church is the physical building a home that we should stand for should stand for generations to come the inner self strong Christian character a disciplined follower of Jesus I give no time to, to I seriously telling you straightforward I give no time to this play coach uh, uh, Christianity where you go in the world, you do whatever you want to do and, and then that world comes to me and say hey, pastor, I don't understand this one thing why is it that I have to become a Christian if Christians is the people they win something and they go like hey, praise Jesus they, they do something great, ah oh, praise Jesus but they the guys that partied the most last night I'm tired of that. Not me now. They, they, the person that have to come to Jesus. They have a block. What is their block? A Christian. A reborn Christian. I promise you someone winning a prize and say, glory to Jesus, is born again. But inactive. And that stops then the growing of the kingdom of God. We cannot, we, we cannot, it's how it is. So it brings me to the, 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 I'll get to the following point now. So we have, so, so to build this church with Jesus, oh, just the, your inner self to be strong, strong models, strong models. We don't, as the pastor, pastor Adam said, he said, we don't have a, we don't have a, we don't have a, a, a law issue. We have a moral issue. People don't have morals anymore. 
You can fight, break, steal, kill, destroy, burn, whatever you want to. And there's no consequence. There's no consequence. Uh, criminals get away with everything. Because, because so, so the laws we have is there, but there's no moral here. It's not built in. There's no schools, there's no church, there's not, there's not enough. But that's why it's so important. I think, really, we have Edgeview here, we have um, uh, Penryn, we have all these schools coming, um, uh, uh, NHS, um, all these schools bring their children here. And, and, and it's so amazing to see that school heads stand up and say, my children, this school will go to church. I mean, that by itself says everything to us. The need out there. We have, we have some of the houses out there looking after orphans, bringing those children. They allow us to bring the children here. We have Dream Week coming. We want to take those people to Dream Week. It's going to cost us 60. Listen, listen. Ah, don't clap. Um, we'll clap when we see what's in the bank account. Because it cost us 60,000 to get the children in there. So it's great to say, yeah, but it's going to cost us 60,000 to get the children there. No, it's us. Who's us? Us in unity as a church. That's just to get 40 more people there. The, the first 40 we have, we want to take 120 people there. But we ran out of capacity. And then the, the places said to us, where we book these children, they say, this is Satan again. And then they say to us, um, no, you can come, but now you have to bring 40 more people. Otherwise, you can't have this accommodation. So it's not just, it's not just stopping those children that have to go. It's literally stopping the children that's already going. You see, it's, it's like this big fight out there. It's not the church that won this. It's the world. Again against us. On a stupid thing like that. It's, I know it's stupid. It's like, why? But then we smile because we have 40 more children that will be, get connected at Dream Week. And not just the children. There's so many people out there that, that, we, that we help that really want to go to Dream Week. What about those people? And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and there's a lot of things that I can say this morning. And then Satan will come in and it will just put in distractions, not building the church. Those things are building the church, character, strong, strong community, Christ-minded, and then handing over to the next generation. I've just said that already, enough about that. But to have that, we need Jesus, the foundation of everything. We need the Holy Spirit. Without Him, we do nothing. Because it was at Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was, was, was poured out on those people in unity. When they prayed together. Why are you not at the prayer? You should be there. Unity. Harmony. You know the elected, selected few praying. Everyone should pray. When we call a prayer fast, everyone should be there. Because where there's unity, God commands His we want to change the city, but no one is praying. Oh, no, no, no one, you understand, it's, it's, a, it's a stupid thing we as humans do. There's thousands of people saying, niemand het opgedaag he. Yeah, maybe the niemand is the people you invited, then you say, niemand het opgedaag, but there's a thousand people. But I'm saying to all of us, where were you Friday night? Ja, ons gaan die Heere vertrou vir groot goed. Waar is jy, want ons nou bezig daarmee? Nee, maar ek sê, moeilike weke gehad. Ja, ons allemaal, ons allemaal nie aan die slaap geraak. We all fall asleep. You know what's a beautiful part of that? That at least God saw what we're doing. And then He blessed. Because He's still alive and awake while we sleep. I have no issue with the sleeping. <laughs> There's a lot of people that go like. They put the, the fist like. And <laughs> so Jesus said to those guys, Hey, welcome to sleep, Jelle. I say, I'm going to be wakker. I'm going to be wakker. Can you imagine those three when Jesus go pray and the God of Gethsemane he goes like, Wait, you pray for me. Three of his top guys. Pray you. He goes, he prays, he prays, he comes back. He's full of blood and sweat and tears because he's going to go to the cross. He's fighting his greatest battle. A drool and alles. <laughs> My imagination goes like, it is stands Jesus. And I think if, if it was me, I would have started thinking, what can I do to scare them? 
roof, look for a rock to throw or, or break a glass, a cracker, something. And they go, they start praying like crazy. Third time they keep on slipping, then he comes back and then they took Jesus. So understand, the fight is real, but you can't sleep in your bed then. They just sleep here. Slap my on your bed. Kissing is not gesweet, or is he fluid when he carries not gesweet? Because that's very important. Because the, that's our basis, unity, together. Amen. Okay. God says in His Word. So it is the Holy Spirit, the Word of God. So how do we have this? Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Word of God. The church in unity and purpose and in worship and love. Then the people in unity and purpose in worship and love. So in Psalm 133, the Bible says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious oil upon the beard of running down the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down the edge of his garments. is like dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord command the blessing, life forevermore. Church life is the unity, unit where God commands the blessing church fight the fight you sleep the sleep now i'm just playing around with the sleep thing now i really i don't work it out here in the sermon i was just having fun with that but i'm saying and i want to just build this in into the sermon which will be set up for the next week and we finish so where there's division where there's division, oh, let's first, where there's unity building up, there's God. Where there's, where there's building up, by this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. How huh? feel forget you all draw, young man? Here you are. I'm talking to the young men. Strong, here you are, what's so full? Jesus is malus, sonner frug. Jij so lief Jesus, maar jy het niks van ander mense meer tyd nie. Net jou gesinnikie. You have to get out of that now. I'm not fighting you, I'm, I'm waking you up. The Bible says, wake up the mighty men. Beat your plowshares. And your pruning is into swords and spears. Come on, sê die Heere. Nee man, sê die Heere. So spreek die Heere. Yeah, read the Bible. It cannot just be you and your family. Nee, pastoor, ek wil nie kom sien vir bezigheid. Nee, ek wil nie, wow, pause. Kingdom business now. Kingdom business. You talk to me how many souls and how are we going to win those souls. Then I have no conversation. Why must we pray and do everything and you just come in, jy het net die vraag hier van wat ons bou. I'm talking to these strong young men. Alles is like, kyk, hy dat Jim, hy is goed staan, so hy pas, hy, ja, ja, hy kan een golfbal slaan, hy kan, ting, But when it comes to hit for Jesus and you have to get the hole in one with that one person that needs Jesus. It's not so important. Or the fish water. You know, you can learn precisely how you get to the fish. And you can tell the you read the fish's brain. Like, you have now these scanners on your boat. Yeah, she's thinking about red this morning. Now, fang your fish. But how do we read that Christian in need and pain? What's our scanners doing? Should be thinking about another soul. That's what I'm saying. Unity. Unity. By this my father is glorified. By our great rugby you played yesterday. Yeah, let me repeat. By this my father is glorified. By our great rugby you played yesterday. No, by this my father is glorified. By bearing much fruit. Fruit, kingdom, business. God is, God is interested in kingdom business. Not what we accomplish. What we accomplish on this earth is to establish the kingdom business. 
verstehen ist. God, growth, build, a build church, against hell. Devil, divide. D, E, God, go. God, grow. G, O, D. Go. Devil, divide. D, E, V. Divide. Divorce. Against. Stop growth. Lazy. Reason, excuse, explanation. Hot Jesus, cold hell, get them out. Low, spit them out. Neutral, ah, the devil's playground. Laziness, inactivity in the kingdom of God, devil's playground. Why are you playing on his playground? What do you know as congregation? But maybe some of you. I don't know. And maybe a little part of our lives. And me and my personal life. And you and your personal life. And maybe there's a little part of that there. Let's change it. Let's wake up. Let's build the kingdom of God. It's not about the bears. Someone will listen to that song. Bears is a fist. But if you're now in Pretoria, it will be about the base. Doom, 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 doom. But here in Mumbala, if we say bass, it's, it's, it's fish. And this is the problem. I say to the sound is bass, up, bass, up. Yeah, pastor, you groen try. Slower, pastor, slower, slow, slow. It's winter now, slower. There is your base. <laughs> we live in an amazing city. We live in an ama amazing province. But let not that be our downfall. I'm talking to myself. God go. God grow. God build. Satan. Everything below that. Neutral. Lazy. Reason, excuse, what? Not to be in church, not to read the Bible, not to have a home cell, not to be part of a home cell, not to grow the home cell, not to be in ministry, not to give, not to serve, not to reach out to that friend, not to give food to the poor, clothes to the poor, help them, not being part of Dream Week, not part of, it's now Dream Week, it's now our, it's, it's our culture, it's what we do. Children going on December, remember December? Do you remember December? Uh, that's what they call, they call it. So they send the children then with, to all those matriculants that, that go party to help them. And to grow internally strong to pray. And then our matriculants to go and become stronger for Jesus. So that when they get into that university, you will have that witness we have of one of our amazing members. That um, she came to me, she says, Pastor, if it was not for this church, I would have been broken by that university. Not the university itself, but by... What happens there but i had christian morals on the inside because you have taught us well so when we went to university we were strong to fight against yes that's how important we are what we are doing as a church and congregation we change that little life right there how by introducing them to jesus building the church so we should be very active all of us very active we start a new home, uh, uh, home cell in um, White River as well, uh, at the school there. It's so exciting. You don't even believe. We pray it, and then the, that same night, I get a message. We plant a new home cell. I go like, what? How cool is that? Of course, but not. So, and I thank all of you that are in that amazing obedience. Just listen to God. And I know it's a sacrifice. I know, understand that. It obviously it's sacrifice, but the Bible says bring those sacrifices. Bring it. Bring it to the house. Watch what I'll do with it. Can you imagine? I want to end with that. Mark 3, 20, 24 to 25. If the kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. So let's not be against the church, but for the church and build the church. 
if you are, some of you already got angry with me this morning, hippie pura, and then um, this is not the golf club where I came with the Yeroni, okay, by the way. This is, this is the gym club where we have to be big and strong and like, like this. And you cannot leave to another gym because it's smelly there. It's a different smell. It's not just ours. It's just different. I hope no one is better here. But it's like honest at all. It's like you can make a carry a bit honest. The afval wordt nou so gemaak in plaas van so. Yeah. Dus kom lief resepte uit daar. The house is divided. Satan's job divide conquer, divide conquer, divide conquer, divide conquer, divide conquer. Against the church, against the building of the church, divide, conquer, divide, conquer, divide, conquer, divide, division, divorce. Then he wins. Every time he gets there, he wins. But God, Jesus wins more. Every time. You either build or you divide. You're either for God or you're against God. The Bible is clear about that. There's no middle ground. The devil's playground. We're here to build. We're here to do great work. We are here to see the lost safe, the poor being fed. We are here to see the naked clothed. We are here to set the captives free. We're here to do a job, kingdom business. The Bible says, first seek my kingdom. Then all these things shall be added. Dan sal jy beter bezigheid doen. Dan sal jy. Then you will have a better marriage. You will have a better life. You will have. First seek my kingdom and these things, which the Father do know you want, will give it to you. But first seek my kingdom and all these shall be added to you because my kingdom is fighting against the gates of hell and you are royal kings and priests in my kingdom and here is what i want you to do i am god not me. god says first seek my kingdom and all its righteousness these things shall be added to you those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish and bear much fruit. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. Those who abide in me and I in them will bear much fruit. There's growth in God, there's build in God against the gates of hell and we are part of that. Come on, let's give God a big shout of praise in his house and worship him and thank him for what he gave us so precious his church in jesus name amen you may be seated every eye closed head bowed you sit inside of this place you've never given your life to jesus but because this relationship starts there if you die today you don't know whether you will go to heaven or hell it starts with you giving your life to Jesus. The Bible says, all be born in sin and therefore fall short of the glory of God. All born in sin. And then you get to a time in your life where you make a decision and you have to choose God or you choose and, and what He did for you. And many say, I choose God, but He says, you have to go through my son Jesus. never given your life to Jesus, not reborn, you don't remember, you have never given your life to Jesus, surrender to Jesus, I want to give you that opportunity, and the moment you do that, you, you become part of his kingdom, a royal priest, a royal king, in his kingdom, and you become part of totally something different, you get purpose, you get destiny, and most important, your name gets written in the book of life, now my question is, your name written in that book of life, you say, not sure well i i really want you to be sure i want to pray for you if that is you and you say i want to also be sure i want to be sure that my name is written in the book of life i want to I'm, I, I want this relationship with jesus if that is you raise your hand quickly all heads about eyes closed no one looking around only me and those working in the service quickly raise your hand all over this place say i want to give my life to jesus i'm coming back to you jesus thank you there's many hands raise them high that i can see i want to see who i pray with Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. All over this place. 
I mean, that one person said, if they have at the end of the service someone that says to me, I have to raise my hand, I will leave. Well, the person did leave and still did not belong to Jesus. And that's the end, sad story. If the church become a tick box. In Jesus' name. You are here because Jesus loves you. And you love Jesus. And yes, with its sacrifice, with its fights, that's making us grow. To give your life to Jesus one more time, raise your hand. If you raise your hand, it's fine. Uh, you can keep it down. I've seen you. Thank you. God bless you. All over this place. Thank you. God bless you. All over this place. Come on. Come on. Jesus loves you so much. Only way into heaven is through Jesus. Not nothing else. Only Jesus. But you have to give your life to him. He said it to Nicodemus in John, uh, in John 3. I almost forgot the Bible book now. And maybe you did give your life to Jesus, but you wandered away. You wandered away. Something got in the way. Understand that as well. Other things become so important. Hey, I've been there, done that. I understand. And sometimes I just have to bring out that wake up thing in that the art. The art board says, hey, you better know me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, me, I'm a strong man. I need that. I need that. But we have to start talking kingdom business now. Kingdom business. So if that is you, your whole life has been your business. What about God's business? You are safe, but you have to come back to Him. You know that. If that is you, raise your hand all over this place. Say, I'm coming back to you, Jesus. This morning, I'm coming back. I've been away way long, too, more, too long. I'm coming back. You have this condemnation in your heart. You're longing to be back at God. And it feels like there's this little distance between you two. If that is you, raise your hand quickly. Say, say uh, that's me. That's me. I want to come back quickly in Jesus' name. Amen. Can I ask everyone to stand to your feet? Um, if you raise your hand to give your life to Jesus or to recommit your life back to Jesus, uh, me asking you now to come to the front facing me, uh, just bring your stuff with you because we can pray with you here. And then, um, but someone else also going to ask you. So don't be angry with them. It's just what they do. Um, and just to make sure and to, to be with you. We don't want you to be alone. We don't want you to be left out. And sometimes it does feel like it. But we really love you and care for you. You say, how can you say that? Oh, we can. I, you pro I promise you. That is just not by the Lord. That's what God installs in you. His love. When you become His child, something happens here. Uh, in every Christian's life. Every believer's heart. In Jesus' name. So if you raise your hand, if not raise your hand, doesn't matter. But you want to give your life to Jesus. Quickly leave your seat and come to the front. Can I ask you to do that? Just quickly come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Quickly come. Cause you love every broken piece. Come on, ask your friends, ask your wife. Come on, come, come, come. Jesus, you can have it all. Come on, this is a new day. It's your day. Come, 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 come. Come, come on, this is a call of encouragement. Come on. Jesus, you Come on, Jesus, you can have it all. You can have it all. You can have it all. Come, come, come. Come on, ask your friend. Bring your world. Bring, 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 bring. We have to bring our world to Jesus every Sunday, every service. Come, 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 come. Come on, Jesus, you can have it all. Here I am. I'm giving you my life. I'm giving you my everything. Come, come back. Come back to the Father. Come back to the Father's heart. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 What a great privilege and honor it is to pray with you this morning. Giving your life to Jesus is the biggest decision you can ever make. And therefore, I'm asking... Please, this is now our time to respect what everyone here is doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want to say to you and those on, on, on watching online, this is your decision. And no one makes this decision. You make this decision. And this is the start of all. I was two and a half years old when I gave my life to Jesus. I was 15 years old when I recommitted my life back to Him. And messed up ever since in any case. Still, Jesus is my savior and he, and he always catch and he always brings me back. Always, always been like that. So you never give up on Jesus, ever now. Now you give your life into his hands. 
doesn't help you look to other people for your salvation. Another relationship, another this, another that. It doesn't help. It, it will never help. Especially you're very young. Um, uh, a year, wherever we are. It's not that. One person messes us up. One person in our lives can mess us up. Yeah, we all know that. We, we're all human beings. I don't need to teach that. So connect to Jesus. And that's what you're doing. And it's an honor to pray with you. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer. You pray that prayer. You believe in the heart. The following prayer. And those watching online, maybe you stand there and you were just afraid to come to the front. It's okay. Pray this prayer. Put your hand upon your heart here. And you say, Jesus, come into my life right now. I give you my whole life. Every part of it. I surrender all. You died on that cross for all my sin, my past, and my pain. Your blood washed me clean right now. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. For removing my old life from me. My sin is gone. Washed clean as white as snow. Thank you, Jesus. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you rose from the dead. And you're alive today. Now in me. Thank you, Jesus, for writing my name in the book of life. I am now saved. I am yours forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. If you watch online, you pray that prayer, please contact us. Um, if you're standing around here and you gave your life to Jesus, please give your name at the info desk. And the rest of you that is brave and strong and that's here, we quickly want to give you something in your hand, a little brochure, something to help you. And then we will connect to you during the week. And then we finish with the service. But then um, can you quickly just go with Gerard, uh, the room next door, and you can join us in the service. Just quickly. And then uh, come on, let's give God a big shout of praise. Those online, please contact us. Write to us. Mail us. WhatsApp us. Whatever you want to do. But don't be disconnected. You know that God appoints and the devil disappoints. Always in Jesus' name. You'll be seated to watch the screens for announcements. joining us for the first time today if you're here our very special guest family if you aren't in one of our home cells yet please we would like to encourage you to join a home cell today our home cells are the basic building blocks of the church and in our home cells we are loved for we are cared for we pray for one another and we disciple one another so if this is you please leave your information at our info desk and we will get back to you dreams you will receive visions you will prophesy when the holy ghost comes upon you the dreams that you have you will find them through pursuing god Join us for our Women's Ministry Moms Workshop on Saturday, 2nd September at CRC in Bombella. Arrival is at 9.30 for a 10 o'clock start. The topic, the whole and healthy mom. 
calling all future moms and moms of children of all ages. Dress code Floro. Don't miss out on our delicious coffee and sweet and savory treats available for sale. And there will be exciting prizes to be won. And the best part, it's free entry. See you there. Proverbs 11 verse 25 says, The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Those who help others are helped. We love people. Our hearts are to help and uplift people. And while many are hurting, we cannot look the other way. Jesus never gave us a command to just sit. He commanded us to go. He commanded us to preach and demonstrate the gospel of Jesus Christ, not to play it safe. As a church, we can never sit on the side while people are without hope. We are committed and take responsibility to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Many families in our communities are being blessed with warm soup, blankets, and clothes. We have also started to see many come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ as we started with the outreaches and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We want to say thank you to each and every CRC member who contributed toward the CRC Cares Winter Drive project. Together, we are uplifting communities and sharing the love of God with those around us. Every time you give to the poor, you make a loan to the Lord. Don't worry, you'll be repaid in full for all the good that you've done. Proverbs 19, verse 17. We ask that you remain seated as the ushers take up the offering. Please note, the doors will remain locked for your security. God bless.